Hello. Hello. From the pool. From the pool. <laughs> Why on earth are we recording a video in the water? I don't know. It, it was just on our path, like yeah. you see in Bali. You know, yeah, we were, yeah. We saw the pool and we were called to make a video in the pool. So here we are. So here we are. Half naked. Oh, yeah. I'd we're say I'm about, about 80% naked sexy. to be fair. I wouldn't say I'm half naked. I'm more than half naked. <laughs> Right. Hello and welcome to our latest video. I'm Kieran Callum and I'm a dating coach for men. Hi, I'm Anna Eden. I'm a relationship and intimacy coach. And today we're going to be speaking about fetishes. Those slightly strange off kilter mm -hmm. things many of us desire, but we don't necessarily know how to communicate those desires to people. And the question is, how do you do it? Anna, how, yeah. do do, how do you do it? How do you do it? How do you just do it? say it. Is that uh, it? Yeah. Is that is the video done? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just is it say. Video done is fucking done. Say. No, but okay, so personally, I am not a huge like, because to me, fetish is also a lot about the mind and like imagination and things like that. I'm more a person who likes to feel like tantric intimacy and energy. But I've been in many situations where I had partners telling, Mm. their fetishes okay. to me and I remember one time when there was this lover of mine who expressed uh, things that he liked to do with um, the swing sex swing and the gag ball and things like that mm. and I was like I really I was feeling not disgusted but I, I felt like I rejected it very very fast because I didn't I couldn't see myself with this gag ball like it didn't it didn't work on me, so I, in that situation, I actually didn't take him seriously. I was just like, well, that's not for me. I just said, that's not for me, and then it was an end of conversation. And then eventually he actually <laughs> didn't want to see me anymore because he didn't feel seen in his desire. He, he said that, well, we, we, you know, it feels like you're not into the things I'm into, and I didn't feel like you, you respected my, um, my desires or my my fetish so do you feel like you handled that the right way no i i i, sh I wish i had listened more and like and, and like be more open to try things because mm. also if you haven't tried it like how how do you know that you don't like it and and really taking him more seriously um yeah that's something i regret so something i will say is if you're gonna bring up something that's slightly off kilter in order to do in the bedroom, you have to be aware of the fact that 90% of the people who you say it to are immediately going to react somewhat similarly to how Anna reacted there, which is, what? You want me to do that? Like, huh? that's mm -hmm. not my thing. Uh, it's like, what? You want me to wear a ball gag and blah, blah, blah. So, from experience, assuming that that is what you want to do, you want somebody to wear a ball gag, or maybe you wish to wear the ball gag yourself, you have to be aware that their first reaction is probably going to be like that. Now, then I would then say your reaction to their first reaction is actually key. So you like your ex there who got like stroppy and he was unhappy and blah blah blah. Mm, I wouldn't have advised him to do that. I would have advised him to when you reacted the way you reacted to just be like, well, this is me and this is what I like. Mm. Not in an angry way, like how dare you and whatever and I fucking hate you, but yeah, this is just me. You know, it's cool. Yeah. To be prepared to walk away, but also no pressure. And then when you're like that, I have found from experience, because I do have certain stuff I'm into, but I'm not going to say, but I have found, <laughs> I know. Found, shush, I have found, right? You know nothing. You know nothing. I have found, I have found that. What was I going to say now? Yeah, that's it. I have found that when you are just completely cool with it, like people, their mentality starts to shift because they're like, oh, well, you're really confident about this thing mm. and you don't it's not like a big deal but then here's the thing as well so let's say you want to wear the ball gag right you want to wear the ball gag that's your fucking thing you saw the end of pulp fiction where marcellus wallace has the ball gag and he's being done and you're like that is actually me so you bring it up with your partner it doesn't have to be like an ongoing conversation you've planted the seed i want to wear a ball gag and then you continue your life as normal you continue life as normal mm. and let them get accustomed to the idea of wearing the ball gag or fixing the ball gag to your mouth and just let it slowly 
grow over time. Now, if they say an absolute hell no, I'll never do that, then it is up to you to then say, okay, am I prepared to stay in this situation or am I not? Mm. If somebody absolutely refuses, then there you go. But if they're, oh, go on. No, no, I feel a little bit triggered because I feel like if your whole sexuality revolves around a fetish that you you want like got to have wear high heels. People or, uh, with fetishes, to, that's how it is. Though. Yeah, but then I feel like you might be a little bit disconnected to your sexuality. But what about real connection? What about like waves or orgasmic waves in your body and like going deep with someone and eye gazing and all that stuff? Like I like I'm from both worlds. Like I'm I spend a lot of time in the swinger scene in the fetish scene, but I'm also from the more like tantric scene so for me like i merge those worlds but if you need a fetish to get off and to be aroused and to have like a sexual life and a connection with someone is that maybe you have to look at that that is true but the question here is how do you actually go about bringing that up with your partner true mm. yeah so how do you do that's with everything right mm. what do you mean <laughs> be honest yeah and find the right time like don't just drop it and don't make it a joke don't like ah oh, or like take it seriously and sit down with the person like hey I, is it okay if i share something with you and like find a good time to do that and um talk about it and talk what it talk share what it means to you share what, what it does to you like with your arousal with a connection with your yeah with your experience like Mm. you like it um so it's funny um you said some interesting things here so number one i think the whole topic of bringing up a fetish it really is actually just as simple as you got two options you've either got number one this is what the fuck i want to do you got number two which is this is what i would like to do and there's it's cool and there's no pressure etc but fundamentally you're going to be open and honest about who you are and then let it grow from there but what you said about how important is your fetish to you really well that's a good point but there is something to add to that so number one the idea of do you need your fetish to get off that's true because people with fetishes can become very kind of like single-minded about mm -hmm. that thing like i fucking need the ball gag yeah and if i don't have the fucking ball gag this is a terrible thing and i can't actually do that yeah so the idea of actually having a look at that and saying why has my sexuality become narrowed and compressed then you are in your mind then yeah. you have sex with your mind you're not dropping into your body so i think it's if you have a healthy relationship to fetishes and if you can combine the body the body arousal the body presence and pleasure with the mind there that's is, a healthy thing but there is something to add mm. is and everything you're saying is correct however chris rock once said there is a however chris rock once said that women can't go back in terms of lifestyle so like let's say a woman's with a man who earns 50 grand a year then she dates another man who earns 75 grand a year she can't now go back to 50 grand a year. that's what he said whether that's true or not whatever but one thing he said about men he said that men can't go back sexually that's very true so what that means is if there's a man who like he's never had a blowjob before but he's always wanted one then he starts getting blowjobs he can't really go back to not getting blowjobs mm. blowjobs are now part of his sexual menu mm, yeah. This is, uh, yeah i yeah i get mm. that and that's how we evolve you know and that's how we we experience new things we add to our our i don't know our <laughs> list repertoire? of yeah repertoire, repertoire or whatever and um i mean there's nothing wrong with that right so you just have to find also people who are like money or who you match that's with in that good sense point who are the people with whom you're speaking to? Yeah. Mm. So if you if you have a whole list of fetishes that you want to explore with someone, mm. and and you're with a person who's like totally um, inexperienced and not interested, maybe that's not a great match for you. Or maybe this person will be interested to explore things with you. But what's hers or him list as well? Because even if you're into vanilla, that's also a preference that should be taken seriously you know mm. it's not only the fetish person's preferences that you need to try you need to adapt to it, it goes both ways of course but maybe there's something that's just not a good match i think yeah um something i think is that let's say people who have fetishes there's a for the most part they're dating quote unquote normal people so people who 
people will fall into the baseline level of what you're supposed to be and do in society and then that's just kind of what you assume so you're some guy who wants to wear a ball gag and you're associating with people who are relatively speaking unlikely to either want the ball gag themselves or to positively be disposed to the fact that you want a ball gag and i think knowing where to go to meet people who resonate with you that's also very good as well mm. like we're in Bali right now and a huge part of why I came to Bali because I knew that in Bali there's lots of conscious and spiritual women. That's a percentage of why I'm here. Mm. Because I realise that back home I'm less likely to meet people like that who I could connect with on an emotional level. Right. So Find your tribe. Basically, where can you find open-minded people with whom you will say, you know what? I wish you to wear high heels and I go, huh, okay, well, yeah. I've never thought about wearing high heels in the bedroom, but why the hell not? Yeah, mm. also like be curious and say yes to things, like you be willing to try things because I think I've just like declined a lot of different yeah. options, offers or, or desires actually throughout the years, especially when I was younger and I was like, no, this is what I like, this is what I don't like why should i do this this is ridiculous you know instead of taking this person's desires more yes. seriously and be more curious like oh how would it feel like wearing these heels or i don't know it could be like playing with the feet or it could be like a more uh, bdsm you know with the um, uh, blindfolds and uh, handcuffs and things like that can you actually surrender to that can you actually mm. be open to try that and that's also a very loving act towards your partner to be willing to meet them there and to be willing to be in their space and see if it's for you and then afterwards you can say it's for you or not. It's like food, if you never tasted a certain food you don't know if you like it or not. Mm. I had, you're right, I was at a uh, sexual retreat of some sort, I can't remember what it was now. Oh, dark tantra, tantric BDSM and at some point they told us to like imagine that you were like an animal in the bedroom, but like a literal animal, yeah. not like, oh, I'm an animal. Yeah. But like, imagine you're a tiger or imagine you're a gorilla or a sheep. Mm -hmm. And immediately I was like, the fuck, I'm not gonna act like I'm a fucking sheep. Yeah. Why would I do that? Shit. Like immediately I, I resisted. I was like, what the fuck is this guy talking? I'm not gonna do that. But then I thought to myself, I was like, why do I care so much? Yeah. It's, if you said, if I was at an acting class and they said, Kieran, act like a sheep, I would have just fucking acted like a sheep. Yeah. But something about the fact that it was attached to sex, mm -hmm. I then became really serious. It's like, no, yeah. I'm a man. I'm a fucking man's man. I'm a Jamaican descended man and blah, blah, blah. And I'm not going to do that. But yeah, then why did I take it so seriously? Mm. Like, why not pretend to be a sheep in bed? Yeah, we have like, to take less, sex less seriously, I think, also. Like, be more playful, be more like, yeah, it doesn't have to be that serious all the time. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, uh, find a good moment, mm -hmm. share, share your desires, mm -hmm. uh, explain, yeah. and um, yeah, and try to be, be open to each other. And yeah, for me, it, when it, in, in terms of fetishes, for me, it's very important to have boundaries. Like if you're moving into BDSM, for example, like really go through your boundaries and what are you willing to try? What are your experience and things like that? Like, just like talk it through before, so you know. Because I wasn't, I was very skeptical to BDSM because I thought it's basically trauma. It's basically people with trauma. It's just like trying to solve the trauma. But I changed my view a little bit. And I met someone who was very experienced in this field and he got me into this world not in a crazy way at all but i discovered something in myself that i didn't even know was there oh. about some submissiveness and dominance and how much i actually loved that so i was able to express a new part of myself sexually that i was actually enjoying and he invited me to to his world yeah so funnily for me the whole world of like being submissive and dominant I had like real, what is the word I'm looking for? There was like a lot of ego attached to it, which is, mm. I am the man, yeah. therefore I need to be in charge. Yeah. And if I'm not in charge as the man, I am a loser and I'm this and I'm this. And then again, it's like, it's actually not that big of a deal. Yeah. It's actually, it's really not. It's only a big deal if you make it a big deal. And something I learned to that retreat that I was at is that there's 
being say submissive or dominance there's there's like honor and duty and respect that kind of comes from both mm. i was in a situation where i was tying up this woman and i felt like a real yeah like a duty to make sure that she was okay even though on the surface i am being dominant and bending to my will and whatnot i also felt like i wanted to make sure that she was okay we were like really connected in that moment and I guess what I'm saying is from what I've seen that playing around with different energies and being open to what can happen is very fulfilling. Yeah, it is. And I mean, being dominant, it also means taking care of people. It means taking care of the safety for, for the situation and for the mm. person. And actually the, the essence of masculine is giving. Essence. The essence of masculine energy is giving. So if you want to be a real man, if you want to be a dominant, you're giving, you're serving. That is, to, that is the dominance and the masculine. And I believe with that we conclude today's video. <laughs> so, there will be more. Yeah, there, there will be. There shall be more. But thank you, uh, Makasi and Cheers, for watching us. You could be doing anything, but you're spending time with us. And that is not lost on us. Um, I am Kieran Callum, men's dating coach at Kieran Callum on Tinder. Also, on Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> on Tinder. Yes, no. <laughs> on Instagram. <laughs> but yeah, I am on Tinder as well. But anyway. Good to know. Yeah. Some promotion, single promotion. Yeah, there you go. Mm. And, I am um, Anna Eden mm. on Tinder. And on Instagram, I'm Anna Eden Coach. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yeah, thank as well. you. Thank you, thank you. Thank bye you. bye. See ya. <laughs>